Tractor calculus isn't what goes through a farmer's head when fixing their John Deere. Rather, it's an efficient way of describing the geometry of angles. This will take some time, but let me explain. In high school geometry, there's two important things to be aware of, lengths and angles. This lets you reason about shapes, areas, distances, all sorts of things. But Euclidean geometry is just the tip of the iceberg. There's a whole branch of mathematics called geometry, and it goes so much deeper than polygons and side angle side theorems. Fundamentally, geometry is about symmetries, more specifically about describing quantities and objects that don't change in an uncontrolled way when we perform a certain action on them. For example, in Euclidean geometry, polygons are natural objects of study because they don't change their area or perimeter when you move them around or rotate them. It's the same deal with more complicated geometries. In Riemannian geometry, we're interested in transformations that preserve lengths and angles, but in a broader sense than in Euclidean geometry. There, we allow distances to be defined arbitrarily. Effectively, the Pythagorean theorem no longer holds, and instead, there's a more general place-specific rule for how to compute distances. So now, lengths do change if we move things around. But we demand that lengths stay the same when rotated. And from these considerations, we stumble upon non-Euclidean geometries, which are the equivalent to studying higher-dimensional analogs of curved surfaces. But because things like length and angle change when you move them around in Riemannian geometry, the natural geometric objects stop being extended shapes like triangles and start being local quantities, like, for example, quantities that describe how curved the space is at some point. These local geometric objects are called tensors, and they capture the geometry in a way that doesn't care about rotations. And in fact, we can build a list of all possible geometric tensors using something called Ricci calculus. Basically, it's a set of operations that preserve this rotation independence, and so the operations can be combined in all sorts of ways to construct new geometric tensors. So now we come to tractor calculus. What if instead of investigating just those quantities that are preserved under rotation, we investigate those quantities that are preserved under both rotation and stretching? This means that even distances at a given place aren't fixed. In a very real sense, this would be the geometry of angles, also known as conformal geometry, and such geometric quantities are called conformal invariants. In that setting, though, the Ricci calculus just isn't good enough. Lots of operations allowed by the Ricci calculus just don't preserve conformal invariance. And so tractor calculus was invented, a much more sophisticated machinery that can be used to build invariance in a way that always preserves conformal invariance. The details, for those who care, basically amounts to embedding the Riemannian manifold into a Lorentzian manifold of two more dimensions and then pulling back diffeomorphism invariance in the bigger space to the light cone. In that way, the tractor bundle is actually d plus two dimensional. For more details, see Sean Curry's and Rod Gover's excellent review. So now lengths do change if we move, move uh. This means that even distances at a given fixed place aren't the same. So now we can come to track.